My understanding is this bill, if it becomes law, has no rape ex exception. So under this bill, if a 13-year-old girl, let's say, was raped by a serial rapist, broke into her house, or maybe more likely raped by uh, uh, a family member, which occurs frequently, unfortunately, uh, this bill would require this 13-year-old to carry this felon's fetus to term regardless of any emotional or psychological damage or trauma that may be inflicted upon this 13-year-old girl to deliver this felon's fetus. Is that right? Rape is a difficult issue, and it emotionally scars the individual, all or in part, for the rest of their life, just as child abuse does. She sounds like it's really tough for her to talk about that. Uh, that's Representative Jean Schmidt, <clears throat> excuse me, um, answering questions that uh, Representative Richard Brown, Democrat, was posing to her off of this bill that she's pushing that, as you can probably tell there, continues to have this approach to limit and eliminate women's health care issues and their rights and their abortion rights when it comes to uh, what they would like to do with their bodies in this country. So in the second part of this uh, exchange, um, uh, Jean Schmidt has this, but that part of her explanation. There's one caveat, watch. But if a baby is created, it is a human life. And whether that mother ends that pregnancy or not, the scars will not go away, period. It is a shame that it happens. But there's an opportunity for that woman, no matter how young or old she is, to make a determination about what she's going to do to help that life be a productive human being. She can choose to raise the child. She can choose to give that child to a loving family member or to give it to someone else. And that child can grow up and be something magnificent, a wonderful family person, a cure cancer, etc. This is not about keeping abortion alive. This is about keeping the mother alive. And just because you have emotional scars doesn't give you the right, right to take the life. I want to remind you guys of um, the um, the scenario that Representative Richard Brown put forward there. That is a real scenario. 13 year old girl raped by a family member, which he said happens quite frequently, or at least enough times that this isn't a one off uh, issue where we have to talk about. <clears throat> she has to deal with all these things that Gene Schmidt just said she should have to, she should have to go through. Taking uh, your rapist baby to term, having that child, and then coming up with these tough decisions about keeping it putting up for adoption or any, giving it to a family member, all these things that she posed as a thing. And she said she's worried about the life of the child. The life of the child that she forgot is that 13 year old child. For some reason, 13 is an adult. Once you've been raped by your uncle and then you're carrying his child and the rest of the family sees this for nine, 10 months and goes, yeah, that's great, that's normal. The rest of the family is not affected by this at all. Hey, rapist uncle, is just coming to Thanksgiving every every uh, every weekend or every year, and talks about how great it is. Hey, how's the baby coming along there, niece? Is is, is that the way families work? I thought there was a whole nuclear family structure that Republicans like to say is needs to be kept intact for America to continue to progress or harken back to the way things used to be. Or the way things used to be that we accept that uncles rape their nieces and then they carry their babies to term. Then they determine then what they're gonna do with it. And then maybe that baby's gonna cure cancer or, 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 or land on the moon. Or maybe that 13 year old girl had a life ahead of her that you've just destroyed and then made worse by forcing her into this. Nobody cares about that life. Let's go into some details of this bill, this horrific bill that she's trying to push because she expects the Supreme Court to continue this down. House Bill 598 was introduced by Gene Schmidt, as I pointed out, and it would penalize doctors who perform abortions if the landmark decision were overturned. That's an increasingly likely scenario. It's called a trigger law because the ban is triggered by a court decision or a constitutional amendment to ban abortion. Republicans in Ohio want to be prepared. So Schmidt's bill would ban doctors from performing medication or surgical abortions 
creating a fourth degree felony for violators. And there's no exception for rape or incest because Gene Schmidt is a monster. Glad I stopped myself there. Um, so also she's anticipating this as I mentioned to happen with the Supreme Court. She's very happy about this again. So if you're that 13 year old girl in this scenario, she's happy about this and she's pushing for it to pass in the state. So the time has come for Ohio to truly stand up for the rights of the unborn is what she said during a Wednesday committee hearing. I pray to God every single night and every single morning that we end this carnage of killing innocent lives because I am pro life. Which lives are you pro? <laughs> The ones you haven't met yet are the ones you can say now so you can get reelected or you can say you're fighting these culture wars. And if this happened to you and happened to your daughter and your family, I can't guarantee it. But I have a pretty good feeling you wouldn't be like, yes, rape her again. Is, is, is that the mindset? Because apparently people who are against that are the monsters in these people's eyes. Those are the people who don't care about children's lives. But you're talking about 13 year olds like they need to carry this rapist uh, baby to term because you never know what that baby's gonna be. The, the last thing on this, the process also when it comes to them punishing these doctors is to chill the, uh, the entire thing out. Because there's provisions in it that say, hey, if they have to save the life of the mother, we get it. Those things would have to be adjudicated and they have to prove it five, six, seven, eight different ways. Do you think a doctor wants to go through all that when they're just trying to do their practice? They're trying to help out women or maybe they'll start avoiding it. That's part of the chilling process. Even if the uh, uh, this doesn't get to the degree to which they want, they want everyone to know that the, 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 the temperature and the tone here is don't even try it. Because even if we find a way to exonerate you from these fourth degree felony charges, you're gonna have to work really hard to do so. And it's gonna take time for you doing anything else that you were trying to do and money and energy. That's the process here.